from where you sit, what do you think the global implications are of what we do know uh, for what happened in Paris? Well, I mean, I think this is uh, another uh, example or reinforcement that uh, the war uh, uh, that uh, the radical Islamists have launched on the West is not over, and that uh, Al whether it's Al Qaeda or you know or ISIS or you, or or a lone wolf or someone who's inspired by a local imam, whatever it is, uh, this is a continuing struggle. It's a battle that. Uh, uh, that is that is certainly is not subsiding if you look at what's going on in the Middle East and now uh, it's not subsiding in its projection into the West. This appears to be another case of a balance between free speech and and is, uh, Islamic extremists. It seems it could at least be I that. would say I would argue Western values versus radical Islamic values. Another way to state it, but part of the Western value is free speech. Yeah, absolutely. News, no, I would news, agree with that. News, but I was just putting it in a yeah, broader context. News organizations haven't been showing the cartoons uh, that this publication did. Would you urge Bloomberg and others to show the picture, show the cartoons, or not? Well, you know, you can either be intimidated by this violence or you can stand up to it and say, we are not going to tolerate it. Now, do you make yourself open to that same type of thing? Yes, but you know what? It's either pay me now or pay me later. Later. Would you post them on your website? Um, if if they were well, we don't generally post things on well, our website like that. Well, but if you want to say, I mean, it's a debate. If you want to stand for freedom, if you want to stand for freedom of expression. Why not set an example? I'm not I'm not urging you to yeah, do it. I'm no, just saying no, like, hypothetically, anybody can publish. You've got a website. Why don't you say to your team, I, I let's stand with freedom and let's publish? I, it. I would say that media outlets have a responsibility to publish relevant materials and not be intimidated by acts like this or other threats to not do so. If it turns out that one way or the other this is connected to a, to, to, to a terrorist group, whether it's al-Qaeda or ISIS or someone who's operating in the Middle East, if it turns out that there's some connection there and there's some, some thought that that might be true, um, this is another stage in what has seemed to be over the last year a kind of r rapidly destabilizing situation. Um, it seemed like a few years ago, like the war on terror might have been won. Um, talk about whether so you think... Someone said no when, that, when, when people were claiming that. Yeah. And, it's connected. I mean, is it, do we know whether there's a formal connection or not? No, but it's clearly connected because uh, what you see from ISIS is, very, is calls to people across the world to rise up and do the things like we saw here today. So whether there is a direct connection where you can find some sort of uh, email or text or is really almost, in some respects, it's important, don't get me wrong, but it's irrelevant to the understanding that this is part of the global jihad that uh, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, uh, Muslim Brotherhood, others are, are, are calling on, and we have an obligation to, uh, to confront that in, a, in, I think, a much more serious fashion than at least, I think, some have been calling for. Two things happened after 9-11 in this country. One, targets were hardened, not all, but there was some of that. And the other was... You didn't do a building in New York. You know yeah. how targets have been hardened, yeah. right? The other was uh, the balance between national security and civil liberties was altered to some extent in some ways. Would you, do, you, would, do we need more of either or both of those? Do we need more hardening of targets, spend more money on that? And do we need, as they do in France, more aggressive policing and intelligence gathering domestically? Uh, my, my feeling is that it's a combination of three things. I mean, uh, I think, the, the, my opinion, the least effective is hardening of targets. And, and it's certainly the most expensive over, over society. Uh, the, 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 the two most effective are, as you mentioned, having an adequate intelligence capability to be able to find out what type of activity is, is brewing in your, in your community. And that includes everything from, you know, all this high-tech intelligence to simply just good work and understanding, you know, who's preaching what. If, if there's someone preaching violence, if there's someone preaching, you know, this type of activity. I believe in freedom of religion. You'll, you'll find no one who's a stronger believe in freedom of religion, but every freedom has limits. And, and freedom of religion doesn't allow you to go out and preach violence to, to kill other folks, and that's, that's crossing a line. And so we need, to, we need to have that information, and we need to act on that information. And, and, uh, and I, I, again, concerns of whether we're doing that. And, and finally, it, we have to go out and where, it is, where, uh, where the breeding ground is, and ISIS is an example, and we have to we have to destroy it where it is. And I think the president has not taken the battle to ISIS obviously very seriously. If you look at the, the number of, of strikes that are that are occurring uh, to try to quote, defeat ISIS, it's a it's 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 a drip drip, not a not an effort to really uh, to really defeat the enemy. And I think that's sending another message that we're not serious about confronting this problem.